that took seven months. Today, the same 2,000 mile journey from Adelaide to Darwin is made by tourists. The first 1,000 miles is a two and a half day trip by train. From arid plainlands, the McDonald Ranges rise purple blue in the distance. And among the protecting hills is Alice Springs, the town of Central Australia, better known as the Alice. Alice Springs is the end of the railway line, and from here the journey is continued by bus. Central Australia is dry. It may rain once or twice in a year, sometimes not at all. Its rivers are dry sand beds, or at most a string of rock pools but their course in past centuries can be traced through the ranges at such places as Simpson's Gap and Stanley Chasm. At Emily's Gap, there is a permanent water hole fed from a subterranean stream. Where hotels are not available, camps are set up along the road for the tourists. For thousands of years before the white man came, the aboriginals lived in these ranges, their way of life continuing without change. The stories and legends of their ancient culture are still recorded in primitive rock paintings and carvings. But under the influence of modern teachers, some Aboriginal artists are now painting in watercolours the beauty and grandeur of their native land. miles to Darwin. Along this road, built during the war years, huge army convoys poured food, ammunition, equipment and personnel to maintain the armed forces that guarded the northern approaches of Australia. 300 miles north of the Alice is a group of huge granite doors, smooth, weather-worn through centuries of time. They have great significance for the Aborigines who believe that they are the playthings of the devil and so they are known as the Devil's Marbles. Gold has been mined in the territory for many years. In 1933, a rich strike started a rush in which men died of thirst and starvation along Tragedy Track, a 200-mile waterless stretch across the desert. Tennant Creek, in the heart of Australia, is a flourishing gold mining town. At the government battery, the ore is crushed and washed off to leave the valuable metal. Besides gold, wolfram, opals, tin and mica are mined in the territory.
camel trains, usually conducted by Aborigines, are still used as a source of supply to isolated miners and settlers of the dry inland. In this country, water is the most essential need, and windmills are in general use to pump the precious liquid from artesian bores, which are the regular source of water throughout the territory. The sinking of new bores goes on in the continuous search for water. With water, the desert soil is capable of rich growth. On the site of an old army staging camp, watermelons grow wild. Some 600 miles north of the Alice, the tourists enter the rain country. In place of the barren land of the center, there is grass and trees. Wildlife is plentiful. Brush turkey, kangaroos, buffaloes, and other creatures roam the grasslands. There are some of the world's largest cattle stations in this part of the country, running up to 15,000 square miles in area. From here, the big mobs take the overland route across the Barclay Tablelands into Queensland and down to the city markets. One of the famous northern cattle runs is Elsie Station, once home of pioneer Nears Gunn. He is immortalized by his wife as the character Malika in her classic of Australian literature, We of the Never Never. He is buried close by the old homestead, and beside him lies Henry Peckham, the mailman, known in the book as the Frizzer. Giant ant hills are a common sight in the territory, and the biggest are seen here in the north. Throughout this region, there are flowing creeks and thermal springs surrounded by tropic vegetation. this fertile land gives rich crops of fruit and vegetables. Experiments have been made in the growing of tropical fruits, cotton, rice, peanuts, and soya beans, pointing the way for the utilization of this north land. Development of this area depends mainly on the conservation of water, and first step in this direction is Manton Dam. From here, fresh water is piped 40 miles overland to Darwin, the colorful port of North Australia. Old Darwin, which was the center of Australia's northern defenses, was almost destroyed by continuous Japanese bombings. But today, the town is being rebuilt to plans designed to make Darwin a model town and seaport. This rebuilding is a vital part of Australia's plans to develop the Northern Territory and to extend communications and commerce with the nations which lie to the north. 